least one time, Brad, and then uh, then you will never hear me say, saying it, the same thing again. Okay, here's my system. I have a system like this, my friend. I have an overcome friction device with a disconnect, and I'm going to use two motors because other than two motors, guys, it's exactly the same. Just the two motors, the controller. You guys remember that that we did in the fall? We haven't used that in the fall, so I'm going to remind you of one, just one. And please don't be mad at me. One. There you go. And motor number two. So this is what we have, guys. And if you guys remember, we said we are going to have, um, let's use a green. So this is basically, physically, mechanically, this will be my gutter. This will be a disconnect on the wall. This will be a disconnect controller on a wall. And another disconnect controller in a wall. You guys remember that? So we have a gutter that's fed from a feeder that's feeding two, two magnetic starters thrown in a wall with a disconnect over computation device overload and control. And Spencer, 99% of what you guys are going to be do, it's doing is going to have this in an MCC or thrown in a wall. The same calculation. It doesn't matter if you put the same thing on an MCC or on a wall. Okay, so that's as I said, I want to I wanna calculate the following for you guys. Number one is uh, always, uh, is my cable. Here's my, I'm going to put the calculation, here's number one, that's a cable. Number two is the disconnect right in here, that's my two. I want to calculate this one. Number three is the over temperature device. That's the over temperature device. And number four is the controller. That's num my number four, controller. Number five is the overload. Number five is my overload. And number six is over temperature device for the feeder. This is number six. And number seven is um, number seven is the feeder itself. Okay, everybody can see what we're doing, guys. Really easy, straightforward, no gimmicks, nothing. And we're just gonna size. And by the way, uh, Spencer, my friend, these are taps. You guys know how tap, you have a, a logs. And you splice it, a T. You T these conductors, your feeders and feed. You can feed as many as you want. This one is a gutter. This one we call these one gutter. Gutter. This is a disconnect switch. Disconnect, disconnect switch. And these are um, magnetic starters. Magnetic starters. All each one of them, and the bottom the bottom ones, of course, it's motors, and these are M. Uh, let me just continue with this. Was, this is M1. This is M2. Motor one, motor two, and I need to give you the information, uh, Spencer, about these motors. The first one is a two horsepower. The second one is 150 uh, horsepower. The first one is 200 horsepower. The second one is 250, and the voltage is 208 volt for both of them. 208 volt. And the phase, obviously, it's a three phase, and it's a three phase for all of them. And um, and temperature rise, temperature, and that's gonna you're gonna see um, temp rise. You're gonna see why I'm giving you this one. Temperature rise for this one is 40 degrees Celsius, and for this baby, the service factor is. Uh, 1.0 and the last one guys is code letter code letter and I'm sorry I'm writing him at the bottom here L and M okay I can read these for you guys if you can read them so I have two motors one 200 horsepower the other one is 150 the voltage for both of them is three phase two eight uh, one of them has a temperature rise of 40 the other one on the name plate has a service factor of, of one and the code letter for the first one is L, for the second one is M. And I need to give you one more thing, full load current for each one of them. Uh, this is full load amp for this baby is given as 520 amp. And full load amp for this baby, uh, that's given as 390. Okay, right? So right on the name plate, you have two motors and all this information on it, and you as a designer are required to come up with these sizes. Very typical, guys, very typical. 
Ryan, my friend, they don't have to be fit from a gutter. They could be fit from an MCC, and the calculation wouldn't make a difference. Would not make a difference. What's the M for? M is code letter oh. to, to do the NRush. Do you guys remember how we did the NRush? Code letter. The code letter to do the NRush. Any question? Anybody wants me to read the, any of that uh, chicken scratches that I put on the, on the board? If you think, Brad, this is a, a, a bad handwriting, I'm recording here. Wait until you see my writing in Arabic. Worse. Worse. It doesn't matter what you write in Arabic, I wouldn't understand it. It, it does it really bad. Since since I was a kid, bad, I had a bad handwriting. So because I stuck. I guarantee you, if you if I write in Chinese, I will have a bad handwriting. Any question, guys? Do you guys share the statues too over here? Oh boy. Nope. Everyone had. <laughs> guys, any question about what's given? On the test on Monday, you're going to see something exactly the same. And you're going to do these seven things. Any question before I go? Go ahead. Uh, Camille, my friend. Okay, so we're going to go size these seven things and call it a day. For this example, I don't. I will do only one example about waters because I know we cover them. And if you guys don't believe me, go to YouTube. Okay, let's go ahead and. Are you okay, DJ? All right, let's go ahead and um, and and start sizing. When we start sizing, do you guys remember the format that we did last time? We did this way, and we had it all the way. So I'm going to draw. Hopefully we can fit a lot of stuff, folks. Hopefully we can. Oh, what what happened here? All right. Okay. I do have how many motors I have? I have motor number one, and I have motor number two, and I have the NEC code. Always we put NEC M number one, M number one, and this one should be M number two, Chad. M number two. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna, and I'm gonna go, guys, and, and we do the sizing for a few things. We start adding them as we go. All right, I'm gonna write in blue. So everything I'm gonna write is in blue. This code, the first one, guys, is uh, as the branch circuit. The branch circuit. I'm gonna write here number one, and this is a branch. Circuit. Everybody knows what branch circuit is, right? We are sizing the branch circuit, not the feeder. The conductor, wire, branch circuit wire. Okay, to do that one, I'm going to remind you, and we did this one, guys. To do this one, we have to go to 430.250 table, and also you have to go to article 430.22. And also, you have to go to table 310.16. All, all the calculations are based on these two tables and one article. Two tables and one article. All right. The first thing is we need the full load current for these motors. Before when we size for motors, you have to find the full load current from the NEC code book. <laughs> I have found them. So please correct me, Brad, if I'm wrong here. It's the full load current is 528 for this one. This is 528. And for this baby is 396 amps. And Mr. Sir is not with us. Uh, DJ, my friend. And where did they get these 396 and 528 amp from table 430.250? And I trust Brooks that we have been in that table many times, right? Everybody knows how to use it. Chanel, my friend, we're cool. Everybody knows how to use this, Ben, my friend. Am I right? So it's just uh, uh, I can't eat without sharing, buddy. Off. So we take 1.25 times 528, and that will give me, I did the math, if I did the math, uh, this should be 660, 660 amps, did I do it right? 660 amps, okay? And you're doing it by 1.25 uh, No, we're doing it by 1.25 because if you go to article 430.22, it tells you it's a branch circuit for a motor. is always continuous load, and you multiply it by 1.25.
Everybody knows that, guys? Brand circuits for motors, brand circuits are 1.25 all the time. No question asked. You're right about 1.25 largest motor. That, that's going to be for the feeder. But we're doing brand circuits. Everybody knows the difference, guys, between feeder and brand circuits? I didn't know for very Okay. So, uh, the second one, guys, it's going to be, uh, oh boy, it's going to be 1.25 times 396. That will get you a healthy uh, 495, 5M. 495 and did I parallel here? I think I parallel. For both, both of them, I parallel guys. I took the 660 divided by 2. That will get me, I should have given me more, more, more. Uh, that will give me 330, 330M. And how about if I use the bottom? 330 and I also paralleled here 495. You don't have to do it the way I did it. I paralleled for these and I came up with 248. 248 amps, and I'm going to write then from the table, you're going to have, I have, uh, I have uh, two sets, that will be two sets of three conductors, each one of them is uh, 400, 400 KC and M, and this one is also two sets of three conductors, uh, Y3 conductors, three phase guys, and each one of them is 250. 250 KCM. Spencer, I'm going to use THHN to be a good designer. THHN. So since they're inside, guys, I use THHN. And and by the way, there's. Let me get rid of that one. There you go. So I'm going to use, um, use uh, four. 30.22 and table uh, 310.16. This is all one. This all calculation here is for one. All these calculations are to find the branch circuits. To find the branch circuits. So I should have expanded it. Jim, do you want me to read something for you, my friend? Oh, yeah, got it. You're good? Typical, guys. We multiply by 1.25 and we size. Do I have to parallel here? It's a good idea, 600 and, uh, 660 amps, you want to pull them in a conduit. Now, you, I'm not going to size the conduit, you guys will size the conduit. You know, from now on, you take the conduit. I'm not sizing conduits. You're going to size it. Right? Size the conduit. Any question, my friends, about number one? Any question about number one? Number two is a disconnect. Number two for both of them is this, this, connect. Disconnect is for safety only. Disconnect is to isolate the system so you can maintain it. For disconnect, guys, if you remember to, uh, 430.110, you're going to go to 430.110 and D wall. If I remember right, 312 brand, 3 12. That's where the size is of the actual size of the disconnects. Disconnects by code, Camille, my friend, is always 1.15. Always. So, piece of cake, I'm going to go and take 1.15 times it by 528, and also 1.15 times it by 396. And if I did these right, I end up with 60. I end up here with 607 amp. And from Dewalt, you're going to end up with 800 amp. And you can use your judgment here and go to 600. That's fine with me. Um, and you take the one. This one will get you 455 amp. And you go to Dewalt to find 600 amp. 600 amp. Any question, guys, about this? Now, here's my question for uh, Spencer. Look at this, Spencer. You have 607 amps. A good judgment, maybe. Maybe we should go. Now, see how I'm trying to see it. Now, we, we're not getting to black and white. Use your judgment. We're, we're seven amps away from a standard fuel. Should I go to 800? That would be a waste of money. If I were you, I would go to the 600 amps. As long as you are, as long as you are capable of signing off on it, you're good.
but I, I usually do it to the extreme, exactly by what the code says. Up, up. But when you do it as a designer, you guys have to use your judgment. Number three. I will, I'll wait for a second. Number three is the fumes, or 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 the more the more proper way of it is overcurrent protection device. Overcurrent <coughs> protection device. Now, overcurrent protection device, guys. I have to tell you the type. <coughs> I have to tell you. If I tell you right now, Brad, you can't size this. I have to tell you what type do I want you to install. Let's put common ones is non-time delay fuse. Non-time uh, delay fuse. Non-time delay fuse. Non-time, I'm going to be using uh, uh, in this one. Non-time delay fuse. Are you guys with me? I just put non-time delay fuse. Non-time delay fuse is the type of the fuse I'm using. I decided to use that baby. And you're going to go to table 4. 30.52 and also you're going to go to 24.6 to find the actual standards. So you need these, this table and this article. Okay, so if you guys go to table 430.52, Eric, my friend, you're going to find the non time delay fuse a multiplier is 3. 3. So 3, you're going to take 3 times. 528 and if I did the math right on three times I have um, um, 1584 1584 and and if you go to um, you're going to get yourself a 1600 amp if you go to the 240.6 1600 amp is going to be your baby the second one guys if you take the same thing three times to make it simple three times V96 equal, and that was going to be a 1188 amps. And if you go to the table, it's going to be 1200 amps. 1200 amps. 1200 amps fuse. Mm -hmm. 1200 amps fuse. So your disconnect is going to be rated for 800 amp, and the fuse is going to be rated for 1600 amps. So normally, if they split them inside the box, guys, they put lugs and contacts for the fuses, separate than lugs and contacts for the disconnect. So don't get confused. If the lugs and contacts are for the same, you might have to match them. But for the most of the time, they have the contacts for the disconnect are here, and right underneath it are another set of contacts and the fuses. Any question guys about the fuses? So let's go to number let's go to number four. What was number four? Number four. Number four is um, controller. Number four is a controller. Contact guys. Controller is piece of cake. For controller, here's where I want you guys to go. Since we are big boys and girls now, we're going to go to Article 4, 30.83, and D wall, D wall, I believe it's 6-4. Try that one, guys, 6-4, D wall 6-4, and Article 430.83. If you go there, this is how, we, how they size them. Let me use the red here. This is how we size them. You're going to say 200 horsepower at 208. And from these two guys, you're going to find it's a NEMA, NEMA 7 from the DeWalt. And the second one, guys, is uh, 150. 150 horsepower at 208, three phase. And this will get you a NEMA 6. NEMA 6. So I have NEMA. NEMAs required on the test. You have to put the NEMAs. To find the NEMAs, Jim, my friend, you need to go to DEWALT 6-4.
right there on the D Walt guys, it gives you the horse, the voltages as columns and horsepower and NEMAs as rows. And you choose the NEMA that gets get you the that particular horse, horsepower. Is it different, Ryan? Can what you guys have? Can you get away with NEMA? The voltage is 2.8 uh, though. Are you looking under the same column? Yeah, pay attention. When you guys look at the NEMA table and 6-12, please look at the voltage. I have a dash in my NEMA setting. Huh? It's a dash and NEMA 7. Yeah. Oh, dash NEMA, that's the same thing. NEMA, da, uh, NEMA dash 7? No, it says NEMA 7, and then under 208 volt, it doesn't have a value. The highest value that I have is 150, which is NEMA Yes. Yeah. So they don't want you to use NEMA um, number 3. One more time. So they okay, so 208 uh, all the way up to NEMA 7, yeah. What, they, what this means, guys, and the reason why I use NEMA 7, what this means, they don't want you to use a motor that high at these voltages. Uh, at these voltages. So, just so for the time being, using NEMA 7, it's a bad, uh, bad voltage. <laughs> it's a bad voltage. If you go that high, means they don't want you to put that voltage on that. On that. It's usually 480. At this level, guys, it becomes a 480. But you're going to ignore that one for Chad, and we use NEMA 7. Nima 7. Uh, 5. 5 is over load, right? 5 is over load. I want to remind you guys, for 5, I want to remind you that two things. The temperature rise for the first one is given as 40 on the nameplate, and the service factor is given as 1. That's all what I know about the two motors. Overloads are sized based on the nameplate information. Overloads are sized based on nameplate information. So, uh, to size overload, you need to go to 430.32. 430.32. If you guys go there, it will tell you if the service factor is more than 150, 150 or more, or if the temperature rise is 40 or less, then you multiply 1.25. All other situation, 150. Did you guys hear me? If the temperature rises 40 or less, or if the service factor is 115 or more, you multiply 125. All other cases, 115. Okay, so let's look at the service factor. The first one, the service, I have 40. Temperature rises 40 or less. So what's my multiplier for the first one? 1.25. Look at this, service factor is 1. It says 115 to go to the 125. What's my multiplier then? 115. Okay, everybody knows why 115 here, 125 here, because of the temperature and the service factor. And if you guys forgot, please review that one. And I know I don't usually take you there, guys. Please go to this and read that article. Very clear. 40 or less, or 115 or more service factor, 125, all other cases, 115. So based on this, the first baby is going to be 1.25, except we need to use the nameplate current, guys. The nameplate current, which is um, the nameplate current, my friend, is 5. What was the nameplate current for the first one? The nameplate current is 520. It's 5, 820N. Please highlight this. 520 current. Five twenty, five twenty, and if you do the, your math on this, you're gonna end up six fifty, six fifty amp, and you're gonna stop right there, no up, no down. And if you do it on the second one, is one point one five times the nameplate for the baby, the second baby, three hundred and ninety, and you're gonna end up with four four nine amp. I want to highlight one of the things. These amps are nameplate bred and DJ and Brooks and everybody else. These amps are nameplate amps, not code and uh, not an um, natural code uh, 430 table. So what would you do, um, DJ, my friend? You go to the electronic controller, tweak it as close to 560 as you can.
Did we do five? Any question guys about five? Any question about five? Any question about five? <laughs> Nothing. Can I move to six and seven? Okay, and then you're not going to hear Chad talk again about these. Number six. Now we're talking about feeders here, guys. Now this is for feeders. Now number seven as feeder. Thank you. Number six is feeder size. Feeder size. For the feeder size, guys, I'm going to continue with the same same format here. For my feeder size, thank you. Over protection device. Why am I looking at one and reading the other? My over current protection device. My over protection device for the what? For the feeder, though. Feeder. To continue with the, the format that we're using, guys. The over protection device for the feeder. Um, the over temperature device for the feeder, we're going to go to 430.62. 430.62 and uh, 240 and 240.6. This is where you're going to find what, what I'm going to be putting, guys. What was the largest over temperature device in the system? You're going to use the largest over temperature device, which is, I believe, 600 amp. The largest over protection device of the system, plus the full load current of all the other motors, which is only one other motor, 396 amps. Doesn't even look like a nine here. Unreal. 300, 396 amps. If you add them together, and if I did my math, 1996. 1996 amps. You have to go down on the feeder, as you guys remember, if you Remember that clearly. So my feeder size then continues to be 1,600 amps. How do I know that there is nothing between 1,996 and 1,600? You go to 240.6. There's no other over temperature device. So you stay where you are. Your main is going to be as big as the largest motor in your system. That's OK. No problem with that. <clears throat> Any question, guys, about this? I want to highlight this one, DJ. This is the largest over current protection device in the system. The largest over current protection device in the system. It's the one that we just calculated. Now the full load current, plus the full load current of all the others. I'm sorry. Do, uh, this is for motor two, right? Uh, this, I'm sorry, this is for motor one, 1600 right here, 1600, because motor one is the largest. Ah, where is this? This one is going to be located right here. That's for the whole system. Okay, any questions about this before we do the last one, seven? Seven, my friends. Seven. Now we are talking about feeder size. The feeder size, guys, the code says uh, which code and where. Um, 430.24, 430.24, and 310.16. This is what you need. 430.24 and 310.16. If you guys go there, it says 1.25 times the largest full load current of the fattest motor and you put them in the brackets like this plus all the other motors 396 and that should give you 1056 amp and I don't know about you but you have to parallel here so you take 1056 amps drop it I dropped it three by three that will get you 352 amps um, and then your answer should be three sets of three conductors. Each one of them is 500 kcm. 
500k cnm t h h m so that's basically what my answer for the feeder should be <laughs> my answer for the feeder should be any question guys i don't know if i told you guys you usually want to pair of around the 500 right you're going to stay within the 500 500 give you 380 amps so if you're within the 380 amps you're good not larger than this, especially if you want to put it in a conduit. Especially, which more ninety percent of the time we are putting things in conduits. Any question, guys? I'm gonna bring one tricky ones for you. One tricky ones, and then uh, we're done with we're done with what with what's gonna be on the test, and what I want you to know. But one thing very confusing, guys, is the equipment grounding conductor for the branch circuits. The equipment grounding conductor for the branch circuits. The equipment grounding conductor for the branch circuits for motors. How do you size an equipment grounding conductor for a branch circuit? So I'm going to write these here. This is not on the... If you guys want to put it on the nest, because it confuses people all the time. This, I'm talking about if you want to... Bring an equipment ground conductor. So here's my ground here. And oh, should, we should use a different color. So you're going to pull that ground, you're going to pull that ground here, and you're going to pull it all the way to here. That's what we're talking about. Let's call this one, guys, number eight, for the lack of a better term. Everybody can see what, what equipment ground conductor for the brand circuit. So typical for both of them. Equipment ground conductor. How do you size equipment ground conductor? I know all of you guys know this, but there's a tricky one. The reason why I'm going to bring it, because there is a tricky one. We size it based on over temperature device. So, this is, and we're going to call this is number eight, which is equipment grounding conductor. For equipment grounding conductor, guys, the first one, Brad, was 1600 amps. So, let's do it for motor one and motor two. This is... This is M1, M2. So 1600 amps. If you go to table, if you go to table, um, table 250.12 and 2. 250.122. What's the over temperature? What's the conductor for 1600 amps? I haven't done that. 4 R, thank you. 4 R. So from here, you're going to end up, how many conductors? Did we parallel? Did we parallel? Mm -hmm. We parallel. So we have three or two runs for that one. Did we parallel two or three for that one? For the first, the brand circuit. I thought we paralleled two. For the brand circuit, we paralleled two sets. Can you guys see that? Everybody can see that we paralleled two sets here. And we parallel two sets here. So when I size, then I have two of them. Why? One in the first conduit and one in the second conduit. So this is going to be two of them. Number, you say four out red? Yes. Four out um, A, W, G. And that will be also a T, H, H, N because it's inside the conduit, insulated. Let's do the second one. The second one was, uh, was it 800 amp? 600 amp. 600 amp. Oh, 1200 amp. 1200 amp. The second one was 1200 amp. 1200 amp. Take it to table 250.122. We parallel two, so it's going to have two of them. Right? And the size is number one out? Three out? Three out. Three out. And insulation T H H N. T H H N. The reason why I brought this, guys, Brooks, my friend, is what the code says for motors. They'll tell you, when you size the equipment grounding conductor, if the equipment grounding conductor does not have to be more than the, the branch circuit conductors. For motors, guys, if you use an instantaneous strip, your, your equipment grounding conductor end up larger than the phase conductors. Duh, I mean, why would you use something like this? Please write yourself a note. When you size equipment ground conductor for motors, this you do the same thing. You go to this table exactly like everything else. But if this number is larger, larger 
than the phase conductors, then you stick with the phase conductors. Larger than the phase conductors, then you stick for the phase conductors. Any question about that? Everybody got that one? For example, if my phase conductors, guys, were, were 500 kcm, and I did sizing, and I end up with an equivalent magnetic conductor 600 kcm, based on that rule, I don't have to go 600 kcm. I, I'm stuck. I, I can't go as, as low as 500 kcm. That's the reason why I put this one. So maybe I should write uh, a little note here. It says equipment grounding conductor shall be um, equal or less, uh, right? So either equal or less than, equal or less than uh, the phase conductors. Phase conductors. Phase conductors. Are you guys with me? The phase conductors. The reason why they do that, because if you have an instantaneous strip circuit breaker, you end up with a, a very large equipment because the overcompetition device is way oversized. You end up with a huge equipment magnetic conductor that's really not needed. The reason why we we went with this big circuit breaker of fuse is because of the air rush. It's not because of a short circuit. So please write yourself that that's the reason why I brought this one here. You're going to encounter it sometimes. Equipment running conductor for motors equal or less than th than uh, phase conductors. So equal or less. You don't want it higher than that. Most of the time, Brooks, you will end up with lower. But under certain circumstances, like if you use instantaneous strip, which is eight times, you're going to end up with a larger. Um, a good example is if you have a 10 horsepower motor. Say, and you do a calculation, you end up with a 20 amp circuit breaker. Well, if you and you 10 horsepower motor, you use the instantaneous 10 times 8, that will give you 80 amps. And you go size, you might end up in with 80 amps, you say number uh, 8, but your conductor is number 12. Your phase conductor is number 12, and your equipment ground conductor is number 8. Do you need to use number 8? No, you can use number 12. Okay. I hope I got through with that little idea. Any question, guys? That's all. I'm going to do one example about motors. When you guys have a five minutes break, I'm going to get back and do AC units now. Um, chillers, two chillers on the feeder. The same thing, we're going to have two chillers. We're, we're, they're special type of motors. Any question, guys, about motors? That's the only example I'm going to run over. Everything else is the same. On the test, will be identical, identical to this. OK? All right, thank you. It's all bad. My friend went out to the kids went in the back there and found a baby tree. <laughs> it, was, it fell out of the tree. It's only a week old. So they had to call the conservation. I don't know. Oh, that's cool. Bella. Okay. Here's um here's the situation. My situation, my friends, is the following. You're gonna see it's very similar, guys. Disconnect over competition device. Moving on here, tab, come over with a disconnect, an over competition device, and this time is an AC1 unit. Disconnect, over competition device, and AC2. AC1 and AC2. And let me just say how things are going to be located. This is my disconnect, use disconnect. This is my fuse disconnect. This is my gutter here. And this is my feeder fuse disconnect. Very similar to the motors, guys. Very similar to the motors, except it's an AC unit. AC units have hermetic motors. They're special type of motors, guys, that they're covered under Article 440. That's why we split them. Uh, Spencer, this will be AC units or chillers. Chillers. When you hear a chiller, the same way AC unit air conditioning, 
uh, one and two. Okay, here's what we need to size for this baby. As always, we need to size always the feeder. That's what really hire us. Number one. Number two, and I change the numbers here just to keep playing with you guys. Number two. Number three is a disconnect. Number three for both of these. So number one, two, three. Number four, I'm interested in the fuse. That will be my number four. Number five, the disconnect. Number five. And uh, if I did it right, number six is actually the feeder. Okay. Before I move in, this is example number two. Example number two for the day. Before I move on, guys, everybody knows what we're doing. We have a feeder that came to a gutter. Everybody knows what the gutter is. A gutter, a box. They can have conductors, and you tap these conductors with lugs. And from this gutter, I'm feeding a two disconnects, only disconnect. Now, my question here, who's going to tell me why didn't I show the controller here? Anybody knows why? For AC equipment, I didn't show the controller. Guys, controllers for AC equipment is part of the equipment almost all the time. So if you have a chiller, if you have a boiler, chillers, um, AC units, they are part of the equipment. They have their controller as part of the equipment. So for the most part, okay? Everybody knows why I didn't show the controller. If, if, if we have to size the controller, we'll size exactly like we did the controller NEMA with some modifications. So I'm not going to mess with the controller because most likely you're not going to be missing with controller for the AC units. They are part of it, part of that equipment. Okay, let me repeat myself. I have two AC units fed from a feeder via a gutter. And of course, you're going to ask me, Chad, give me more info about these. So here's what I want to give you guys about this one. It's full load amp on the name plate of that baby is 70 amps. And for this one is 120 amps. Uh, there's LRC, locked rotor current. For this baby is 160 amps. And for this baby is 451 amps. And the voltage for this baby is 240 volt. And what do you guys expect this baby to be? 240 volt. And it's a three phase. And this one's three phase. This is all what I know about this. Uh, equipment. Uh, they gave me the full load amps, like I gave you guys the chillers. I gave you a full load amp of the chiller. Um, and you need to size these for the chiller or the AC units. Full load amp is how much they're going to consume at full load. Locked rotor current is a big deal, guys. I'm going to show you why we have it on chillers. Locked rotor current is what's the highest amount of current that they rush. Basically, it's an inrush. Lock rotor current is if you grab the uh, rotor and hold it and energize, that's how much current is going to draw, this system is going to draw, which is basically the inrush, the inrush, which is basically the inrush. You get 120. 451, these are the full load amp. This is full load amp. Lock rotor current, yep. And I, I remember now, let me turn my, my email off. I remember I forgot the short circuit for the motors. We'll go back, guys, and do the short circuit for the motors in a second here after we're done with that. Okay. One section. Yeah, I'm not, I'll take your time, buddy. Any question, guys? Can I move a second? Spencer will take a few seconds here. Yeah. Let me get my coffee here. Everybody knows what we're doing, sizing for an AC chiller an air conditioning system or a chiller. Okay, let me go to the second one if you guys don't mind. Everybody's okay? Move on? Okay, move on, Chad. There you go. Let's go, I'm gonna draw the same, similar to what I did guys for the motors. I'm just gonna, since it's two of them, um, very similar. And I'm gonna have right in the middle here, and I have my code. This is NPC. This is chiller, oops, uh, AC unit or chiller. 
AC number two and AC number one. Okay, and we'll continue with working with that one. The first thing I will need to find, if you guys remember for that baby, is one grand circuit. Grand circuit. Grand circuit. Grand circuit. Okay, you're going to go to article 440 this time, dot, if I remember that, I want somebody to check that one, guys, 32, dot 32, and table 310.16. This is where the 440, why 440? Because 440 is the one that talks about hermetic motors, a special type of motors that goes in chillers and AC equipment. If you guys go there to verify it, you're going to see the following. You're going to take the... Uh, 1.25 times the full load current. Remember the full load current of that motor was, what was it, 70? Yes. 70 equal, and that will get me uh, 88 amps. 88 amps, and it's going to be three conductors. Number three, if I did that right. Number three. A, W, G, T, H, H, N, and Mr. Rivera will size the conduit for us. So that's basically the, the conductors for this baby. The second baby, 1.25 times, all the full load current for that second one, 120? 120, 120, equal uh, 150, 150 amps, and it's going to be three conductors. Number one at A W G and it's a T H H N. Okay, so I size the the conductors. Now Mr. View EMT that baby and you can easily size the EMT, right? And you see that will get you the size of the EMT conduit that you need to pull. Piece of cake. And then you give it to a, a well qualified, well trained electricians like DJ and he goes bend them for you and, and, and install the system. Any question is, any question about sizing the conductor? Sizing the conductor. Oh, by the way, uh, I, I don't think I mentioned, when you guys go to 310 to 16, you go under 75, Brad. Column 75. All these motors in HVAC equipment, column 75. Should I write this down? Especially for smaller conductors here. Um, I want to say 75 degree column. 75 degree column. So write this one, 75 degree column when you size them. Almost always, all of these motors in the track equipment get 75. So we size the conductors. Any question about the conductor bin? Exactly like we did for motors. What's really the difference? The difference is we didn't go to the code to find the full load current. Because for HVAC equipment, there is no code tables, guys. There's special equipment. They have a lot of, they have compressors and con condenser and a fan, uh, it, it, there's a lot of equipment. So they have to test it and give it a label M, a label, uh, a labeled M or M on the label. Number two. Number two, guys, if I remember that way, right, it's uh, number two is the overcurrent protection device. Number two is my overcurrent protection device. My overcam protection device, guys, here's where you're going to go. 440 .22, 440 .22 and 2, 40 .6. That's where we're going to go. 440.22, if you guys go there, it will tell you you can multiply 175. But if your system doesn't start, you can multiply, uh, you can go all the way up to 225. And then go down. Here's what I would do. And then you, you can do whatever you want to do. I always start with 225 and go down. Because that's as max as I can go. 225. If you guys go read there, it will tell you. you multiply. I First you start 1.75 and you see is this system is going to start. Yes, done. Go up. If it doesn't start, you go 225. So I want to go. My max is 225. But go down though. It doesn't allow you to go up on the 225. So I'm going to go. Uh, with the uh, two, 
2.25. Where did the 2.25 came? From Article 440.22. That will get me. Uh, that will get me 100, 158 amps. Go down. Don't go up in there. It's not like motors. You go down. And what's my next standard? 150 amps. My next standard is 150 amps. The same thing for this baby, 2.25, multiply it by 150, oh no, by, by, uh, by 125, 125, equal 270 amps, 270, and your next standard, 250 amps, give me a second. 200, uh, 225 guys is, came from this, this article, right? 2.25 times 125. Uh, should be one, 120. Thank you. This one. You know what, DJ? 120. Oh, that's all right. 120 equal 270, right? That the answer is right. Right. 270, and you go down. You go down. You go down. I emphasize the word going down on these. Any question guys about this? Any question, my friends? One month. I want you guys to wake up if you're sleeping when I do the third one. Three. I want to have this connect. The disconnect, there's a few sizes for the disconnect. I want you guys to pay attention to it. All of them are disconnect. When we size a disconnect, actually for motors the same way, but I, I emphasize in H back. We size the disconnect based on two things, the amp, the full load amp, and also, also the horsepower uh, rating. There are two ratings for disconnect, full load amp and horsepower rating. Okay, for full load amps, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, how am I going to show that one? I'm going to show it right in here. We're still talking about disconnect, uh, and I'm going to say um, amp rating, amp rating. For the disconnect, the amp rating for the disconnect, two rating. One is the amp rating. The amp rating is like motors, very easy, 1.15. The amp rating for the motors, guys, is from Article 440.12. 440.12 and a D wall. D wall, the same thing, guys, 312, 3-12. Okay? If you go, guys, to Article 440.12 and D walt. 312 that will get you the disconnect the amp size of a disconnect the amp size let me repeat myself disconnects have two when we size them we size them based on two criteria criteria number one is the amp criteria number two is the horsepower okay i didn't do this for the motors because it really doesn't make sense if it's one disconnect per motor because it's already rated for it but it will make sense for the feeder okay so um Having said that, then that will be 1.15 times uh, uh, 7, 0, and that will give me 81 amps, and it's a 100 amp disconnect. DJ, what if they get the 100 amp, not 90? It's from B wall 3 12, right? Mm -hmm. That's a standard disconnect, not over competition device, disconnect. The second one, 1 1.15 times 120. Uh, equal 138 amps and your SNCC standard 200 amps. So there's my two disconnects next to these equipment, right? Here's what I want you guys to do when you have your chillers. Now you grab a chiller, take the full load current of the chiller, do the same thing when you size a disconnect for it. 1.15 and go to the next disconnect standard. Now we're done. I want you guys to highlight this one. We're done with the amp sizes. I'm going to call this is A. We're done with the amp size of a disconnect. The amp size of a disconnect is done. That's it. So my disconnect amp wise is going to be 100 amp and 200 amp. 100 amp and 200 amp.
Okay. Any question? Yes, Brad. Yeah, please. We have 150 amp over current protection device and 100 amp. Why? But it had to be small. Uh, or if the if you, if you, the fuse is to fit on it, yes. But you could have your disconnect here, and we talked about this. And um, the place where your fuses are fitting is different than a disconnect. So I can have, I can have. Um, here's my disconnect part is right in here, and right underneath it, another part for my fuse. Logs and everything else rated for, and all this. Could be in one unit. All this could be in one unit. So that could be my 100 amp disconnect separate than my, what is it, the other one? 200 amp fuse. 200 amp fuse. If the fuse is rated for the same disconnect, you're absolutely right. You might have to up, uh, what's the fuse? You have to up your disconnect to a 400 amp disconnect. Mm -hmm. okay. Up bit. I wouldn't worry about this one because they size them slightly different. Inside the box, they size the fuse. Um, if I have my over device 250, you might not be able to fit. What you're saying is I might not be able to fit 250 fuse in a 200 amp uh, disconnect. You're absolutely right. Then in a case, if that's a situation, if they're, if they're designed in that way, then what do you do with this? You up it to the next standard to fit the 250. That will be 400. The same thing here. I have 150 fuse and I want to fit it in a, two, uh, a 100 amp disconnect. If that's if I have to put the fuse in the disconnect as one unit, if I have to, which I don't have to, there could be two different boxes. Um, then, then 100. Then you can up. Uh, which one is going up? The, this one is going to be up to 200. So write yourself a note there. If you if the fuse is to fit in the disconnect, the disconnect have to be amp-wise size to fit to fit it. But it doesn't have to though. It could be two, two different boxes. As I said, here's one box for my disconnect 100 amp. Here's my fuse lugs. Just a, a lug where you put your fuse. Two lugs and you flip your fuse in it. Any question, guys? Good one. Any question? So you use your judgment on that one. If it's a one fuse disconnect, you're absolutely right. A fuse disconnect, one box on a wall, one assembly, your fuse has to be equal or smaller than the size and size of a disconnect to fit in it. So, and that's why in most of the project, guys, you most of the project you see this situation. You see a 400 amp disconnect here and 300 uh, amp over temperature device. There's a one assembly. The disconnect is always larger uh, or equal. That has to be equal or less than a 400. If they're one standalone unit, big unit. Okay. And then that's when you match them. Let's do the horsepower rating. The horsepower rating, please, I want you guys to wake up with me because it's the two calculation for it. Really interesting. Calculation number one, I'm going to go and use this one, use uh, blue. I'm going to call it horsepower rating. Horsepower rating, there are two calculation. Calculate, and this is, I'm going to call this is B. So A and B, these two. And for A, I'm going to have one. The calculation number one for it, guys. And is based on so you're going to take and this is might confuse you slightly so please wake up with me go to these tables if it's if it's confusing for you you're going to go first to table four um i'm sorry 430 believe it or not dot 250 and this will be sizing based on full load current we're going to size based on full load current what was the full load current, Spencer, for the first one? 70. Take this one, guys, under. What was the voltage system for this baby? Did I give you the voltage system? 240. To 240. So look what I did. 70 amps all the way to 240. What's the horsepower equivalent? The equivalent horsepower for 70 amps from 430.250. We're doing the opposite now. If you guys go to 430.250, what is the horsepower can give you 70 amps or more? So if you guys go there, 
the equivalent, I have 30 horsepower. Anybody came up with something? So you have to get 30 or 70 or more amps. I have 30. This calculation gave me 30 horsepower. Everybody knows where I got the 30 horsepower? Take the two, the 70 amps under 240 volt to table 430.25 and see, see the horsepower that can give you 30 amps. Did you get, did you guys get it, Eric? So you have to get 30 amps or more though. You have to get 30 amps or more, not less. So what's the horsepower under 480, the horsepower under 480, uh, I'm sorry, under 240, under 240, the horsepower under 240 that can give you 70 amps or more. The smallest, of course, 30. Let's do the same thing. The same thing for this one, guys, 120 under 240 volt. What's the horsepower? I have 50 horsepower. 50 horsepower. So based on the horsepower, full load amp horsepower, I need a 50 horsepower disconnect, and I also need a 30 horsepower disconnect. One for the more AC1 and the second one for AC2. Let me repeat myself one more time, guys. Based on the full load current, I need the first disconnect will be will be 100 amp. 100 amp rated and a 30 horsepower rated disconnect. Two ratings, one horsepower one. The second one is going to be 200 amp and 50 horsepower rated. Based on on the the the, the full load current. Any question, guys? Where we got the full load current and we got the horsepower? Kind of, we're doing the opposite of what we did in the motors, guys. Instead of having a horsepower, finding the full load current. Now we have a full load current. We need to find the the horsepower. That's calculation one. If that's not confusing for you, let's do calculation two. And and if we do two calculation, guys, I'm going to choose the one that gives you the largest number. Calculation two is from table two. Uh, this should be from table four, thirty. I don't know how many of you have been there. Two five one B. Very few of you guys probably have been in table four thirty dot two fifty one B. Can you guys go there? 430.251B. If you go there, always assume it's a design B or one of the B, A, or C, A, A, what is it, B, C, and D, the, the options, B, C, and D. If you guys go there, we size based on the locked rotor current. So this is sizing based on the locked rotor current. What's the locked rotor current for the first motor? Remember I gave it to you guys under the, the AC? There you go. Oops, where we are here. We said the locked rotor current 160 and 451. Can you guys see that? The locked rotor current. I sized, I came up with one size based on the full load current. Now I need to have another size based on the locked rotor current, which is given. 160. Okay, let's see. From 160, 160 amp, if you take it under the 480, that will get me 10 horsepower. You guys came up with 10 horsepower? For the second one, if you take the the 450, 451, and that will get me 40 horsepower. Can you guys see that where I came up with the 10 horsepower and the 40 horsepower? And then here's my question for you. Then you're gonna choose the largest horsepower for that particular. So Eric, you can tell the 40 is less than 50 and 10 is less than 30, so ultimately my disconnect is going to be 200 amp disconnect, this one, for 50 horsepower rated, and this one will be 100 amp and 30 horsepower rated. It's tweaky things, guys. They size the disconnect based on amps and full load current. And the reason for this, uh, Brooks, is your disconnect, the worst that could happen is your motor is running right, right here, and you go and turn this, this, this is off and you, it's on, and you go turn it off. If it's not horsepower rated, it will explode. You're not supposed to, by the way, you're not supposed to mess with the disconnect when the motors are running. You're supposed to turn it on and off from, off from, from the controller. But suppose an average Joe like you, Mr. doesn't know anything about electricity. Oops, did I say that? For your chad, goes and the motor, this motor is running or AC is running, and you go shut it down for the disconnect. <coughs> If it's not horsepower rated, that disconnect will explode. That disconnect will explode. Okay? That's why we size them based on horsepower rating. 
The same thing for motors, by the way. I didn't do it for motors, but some motors are exactly the same. Let me repeat myself, because that's no. We haven't done that before. We size the disconnect, <coughs> especially for AC equipment and motors. I didn't do them for motors, but motors are the same way. Based on two, first, the full load amps, exactly like motors. The second thing is horsepower, the horsepower. Horsepower has two calculations. First, from the full load current. Second, from the lock rotor current. You go to two different tables, 430.250 and 430.251B. And from there, you size, you find the horsepower that can give you this amount of current or more, not less. This amount of current or more. And, uh, and of course, don't forget that here you have to use the 240 volt. You need to go on the 240, 240 volt, under the 240 volt, 240 volt, which is in my case, Brad is 230, right? Everybody knows that 230 is the 240. They give you a leeway of a, a, a certain amount of voltage for voltage drop. Okay, so here's what I want to highlight. I don't know how I'm going to do this, but I'm going to highlight these. So my horsepower ultimately is this and this. That's the size of my, my and this and this. So when I tell you what's the, what's, the whole, what's the size of your disconnect, you're going to tell me it's a 200 amp um, and 50 horsepower. 200, on the disconnect, if you read these disconnect guys, right to the disconnect will tell you the amps and underneath it the horsepower rating. The amps, so it can carry the amps. The horsepower, if you are to interrupt the equipment when it's running, if it's not rated horsepower, guys, it will explode. You're not supposed to interrupt it, but people do. You know, an average Joe will do it. Or for an emergency, you see somebody's being electrocuted or something, or somebody's hand is in a mixer, and you don't know where the controller is, you go shut it down from the disconnect. You don't want it to explode in your face. Any question, guys? Any question, my friends? Any question? Now, let's go. This is number. Everything here is for number three. Let's go do it for number. Any question before? This is really the newest info. That these two are the newest. The last two are the newest info. How to use stable? You guys have used table 430.250 all the time. I, I have no doubt that you know how. This one is exactly the same. And instead of giving you a horsepower, Eric, and find the amps, I'm giving you an amps and find the equivalent horsepower. So you keep going down, down under that voltage until you find an amp equivalent to 30 or more. And then you go this way and you find the horsepower rating. Mr. Bu, any question, my friend? Good weekend. Did you work? How many weeks did you say? Seven weeks with Chad and then you guys are done? Seven weeks with Silvio. It's hard sometimes. I'll make it easier for you. Okay. Can I move to the last two guys? Spencer, can I move? Muhammad, my friend. We're good? Yeah. Okay. This is, um, this is recorded as well as PDF. So for those of you like Mr. Bab and Muhammad, if you came late. Um, and I will go over another example before the test anyway. Okay, let me do the feeder. The last one uh, was number five, I believe. Number five uh, and number four. Let's do number four. Number four, four is feeder, feeder, uh, size, the feeder size. For the feeder size, guys, um, is number four the over compression device? Number uh, number four is over compression device. Is feeder over current protection device? Feeder over compression device. For feeder over compression device, five disconnect. Uh, okay. Feeder over competition device. We're going to, we're going to use the largest feed, the largest over competition device, plus all the full load current of all the others. So, um, and wh where is my 440? Okay, let me just say 440 uh, full load amp. Okay, feed over competition. Yeah, 240. 440. I'm looking for 440 
dot two two b one. Here you go. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, the code. I'm looking for the code for it. This is from four forty dot uh, dot twenty two b one. If you guys go to this, it will tell you you need the largest overcome friction device, exactly like motors. What was the largest? Two fifty amp. Plus the full load current of all the other motors, 70 amp. Does that sound familiar, guys? 320. And you're going to go down. If it's not a standard, you go down. And that will take you down to 300 amp. Piece of cake. Exactly like the motors. No question asked. You took the largest over convection, largest over convection device, not fuse, not, um, not disconnect. You add the full load current of the other motor to it. If the uh, the other AC, if there's multiple ACs, guys, you do the same thing. Keep adding them, and you go down. This is number four. Any question, guys, about this? Number five. Number five. Um, as number five as disconnect size for feeder. Let me give you a disclaimer. You all, uh, Brooks, my friend, you either have a disconnect for the branch or a feeder, but you don't do both. It waste of money to have a disconnect for the branch and another disconnect for the feeder. But suppose that we we've done it. Suppose that we have a feeder disconnect. Where would you have a feeder disconnect, guys? If you have an assembly line and you have 16 motors running this assembly line, all of them are in sync, VFD together to move this process. This is a process. If you shut one, one down, look, the whole process is down. That's when you have a feeder disconnect. You guys hear me? 15 motors running a process, a, bill, uh, a conveyor, for example, moving 15 to carry cars or whatever. 50 motors, 50 or more each, all run by the same, these 50 motors. And you, you shut, if you shut one of them down, you shut the process. So a case like this would be you have a feeder disconnect and you don't have a grand circuit disconnect because the outcome is the same. If, they, if I want to maintain that one, I have to shut the process down. You know, so that's where you have a feeder disconnect. Okay, so feeder disconnect, a few things I want to give you guys to write down feeder. Uh, feed over competition, I feel disconnect. We're going to go to 440.12b. 440.12b. And don't forget, my friend, DeWalt. DeWalt is 312. 3-12. To get you the standard sizes. For disconnect size, Brad, the same thing like for the brand circuit. We size the disconnects based on two values. Amp and horsepower. Amp and horsepower. And the horsepower is sized based on two values, the full load amp and the lock torture current. And I want to show you how we're going to do it. Let's do the amp sizing. Amp, amp size. The amp size, my friend, the first thing you're going to do for the amp size is you take the 120 plus uh, the 70. And I want you guys to look exactly what I did. And you multiply both of them by 1.15. Did you see what I did, guys? This is different. You add them up and then you multiply them by 1.15. Unlike the, unlike the conductor where we multiply 1.25 and then we add, this is first we add them and then we multiply them by 1.25. Let me make, make a big difference, by the way. And if you guys came up with this, you're going to end, end up with 219 amp. And if you go to my friend Dewalt, that will land you a 400 amp. Um, a 400 amp uh, fuse that will lend you a 400 amp fuse, a 400 amp fuse. Uh, I mean, disconnect, a 400 amp disconnect. Any question, guys, about this? This is part A, which is the amp size. I want to go to part P, which is force power rating <clears throat> for the same disconnect, force power rating. And I will stop right here. So I sized my disconnect based on the amps. I found 400 amps. Now I need to know, Ben, what's the horsepower rating? If, if somebody um, less than an average brained individual goes and shut that process from the disconnect as you're not supposed to do, would that <coughs> disconnect explode in the face? 
So that's why we're going to size it based on the horsepower. Horsepower, two sizes. One is full load amps, and the other one, guys, is lock structure. And very easy, if you follow the process here, so I'm going to go size number one is based on full load current. Look what I'm going to do, guys. What's the full load current of the first one? The full load current of the first one is 120, plus the full load current of the second one is 70. You add them up, you're going to find 190. Uh, 90 amp and here here's where you're going to go guys to table uh, 250 dot uh, no 430.250 430.250 430.250 table and if you guys see first Eric I added them up I came up with 190 then you go to the table and find the horse bar for it so if you guys go there um, you take the 190, 190 amp, take it to table 430.250, and that will get you, if I did this right, give you 75 horsepower. 75 horsepower. So calculation 1 gives you 75 horsepower. Let's see what calculation 2 is going to give you. So the first calculation, I added them up, because now I'm looking, Brad, at the feeder. That's why I added them up. I'm looking at the feeder. That's why I added both of them. That disconnect is going to be interrupting both of equipment at the same time. Both of equipment at the same time. Okay, so that's a full load current. Let's do calculation two, which is based on the lock trotter current, and then we'll pick the largest. So let's do calculation two. This is lock trotter current. And for lock trotter current, if I remember right, there's 160 here. 160 plus uh, 451, 451 equal um, 6, 611 amp. And if you take the 611 amp, take this one to table 430.251B, 251B, which is table 430.251B. If you guys go to there, it, this will give you, if I did that one, 50 or so. 50 horsepower. Okay. The first calculation gave 75. The second calculation gave 50. Which one do you think we're going to pick? The 75. Camille, my friend, does it make sense? Yeah. You added... The only, we, the, we did these tips, guys, a minute ago. The only difference here is we added the full load currents uh, one time, and we sized the horsepower, and then we added the lock structure current another time, and we sized the full load current. Here, 50 horsepower, uh, 611 amp, 611 amps. The tables, guys, for both of them is 430.250 and 430.251B. Does DWAP test the 430.251B? Uh, I'm not sure if DWAP tells it. Any question, my friends? So, to summarize, did you steal one of my pens? To summarize, guys, the size of this disconnect is going to be this baby plus this baby. So when you go, Spencer, and you order disconnect, you say, I really would like a 400 amp, 700 and uh, 750, uh, 75 horsepower motor. Uh, 775 horsepower, 400 amp disconnect at 240 was the voltage system to work. And off you go with your with your uh, disconnect. I can't emphasize, guys, the disconnect is the slightly different than what we have we have not done up to my knowledge. You guys have not done with me at least this one before. You have not done this one before. Can I repeat myself one more time? Jim, my friend, when you size the amps, you add them up and then you multiply by 1.5. That's different. And then, easy, you go to DWALT 312, that's the amp size. Now, the horsepower size, two calculation and pick the largest. The first thing is based on the full load current for both of them. You add the full load current of the two, and then you go to table 430.250 and find, find yourself a horsepower motor that can give you this amp or more or more and that end up being 75 
and then we go to the log filter current, add the log filter current, and then we go to a different table, 430.251B, and the same thing, find us the horsepower can give us this log filter current, combined log filter current of the two of them, and this end up 50, and then you choose the largest. And then you choose the largest. You don't, I can't emphasize bread, you do this either on the brand circuit or on the feeder, but you don't have a disconnect in both of them. Either, brand, most of the time, guys, 90% of the time, you're not going to do what I'm doing at the bottom because you're going to have a disconnect for every equipment. Unless you do process. If you're in the process, uh, control, and assembly lines, and all this stuff, you have multiple motors moving one assembly. Well, if you shut one of them, the, the outcome is the same. You shut down the process. So why, why, why should you put a disconnect next to each one of them? Because it's a waste of money. The code allows you to have one big disconnect that disconnects 15 motors. With to work on assembly, lock it, tag it, and then you go fix things. Holly, did you guys cover this in the, in the, the two nine two nine three? Okay. Any question, my friends? Any question? One last thing, which is the feeder left. Anybody can predict the feeder would be? Very easy. 1.25 times the largest, fattest, fluffiest motor plus all the other motors. Piece of cake. So I'm going to go and size numbers. This is number four, number five. Any question about four and five, guys? Okay, let's go to number six. Number six is now it's the feeder. Feeder, conductor. Conductor size. Here, conductor size, guys. You're going to go to 440.33, 440.33, and 310.16. These are your references, if you don't believe Chad. Um, and the code says 1.25 times the largest, fattest, fluffiest motor would be the 120 plus plus the seven. See the difference here? Can you guys see where the plus is? First you multiply, then you add. And if you guys do this, you're gonna end up with 220, 220 amp. And if you take this one to 310.16 under 75 degree column, that will get you a healthy three conductors number, number four out. If I did that right, four at A W G T H H N, and my friend Mr. Urbev will size the conduit for us. We'll size it. If uh, if you are to size the equipment grounding conductor, guys, the same way like we did the motors, the equipment grounding conductor does not have to be larger than the four at. You size it based on over protection device, but they don't have to be larger than the the four out. Any question, my friends? The good news is when you guys work for engineer firms, they have these tables that they already calculate, and I would tell you if this is your chiller, this is your size of conduit, this is your overcome protection device, this is your disconnect and everything, and off you go. If you do this in an engineering firm, you probably will be fired the second day because you don't have time to do it. The reason why we do it here, guys, because we guys have the time to go over and understand it. Hopefully, when you move on the industry, there are standards, tables that you use, but now you understand where these standards came to be. Instead of just following, you know, you understand where they came to be. I had a student, guys, I'm not going to say mention names, but I want to mention went to Michelle Pulley Erickson. And, and, and he had an overcapitation device for a chiller. The overcompetition device was 1600. You know how we, we move it up. He was sizing because who was sizing for the chiller, the, the feeder, to match the overcompetition device for a chiller. So imagine the bigger conductor you're going to end up because the overcompetition device for a chiller is, is a, already high because of what? Errors. Anyway, because he thought that well, Chad said that we match overcompetition device. That was for panels, not for chillers or motors. Chillers and motors, that's how we size the feeder in the grand circuit is. Otherwise, you're going to end up, not wrong, but you end up with a huge current, a huge conductors, when in reality, you really don't need it. We do not match the over device, to the cable to the over device when it comes to motors, transformers, or, um, or chillers. 
Uh, you can if you want to, but it's an expensive piece of equipment. I know I missed one thing, guys, on the motor exercise. If one little thing shouldn't take that much. The motor, do you guys remember I gave you the lock, the lock rotor current L and M here for the motors, the example of a motor? That was example number one. Number one. Can I can I get you guys to I want to go back and just calculate the air rush on these two motors based on the lock torture current L and M. Okay? Everybody know where that the example number one? I gave you L and M, but we didn't finish the lock torture current. Okay, quick, 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 quick. I want to call this one. This is just move, move it away here. This is coming from example number one, which is motors. Motors and Let's call this one, what did they call it at that time? I'm going to call it short circuit. Short, uh, not short, short circuit. Um, um, inrush, inrush. I start, start or inrush. Start equal, I start equal, guys, for these, you're going to go to table 4, 30, dot, 7B, do you guys remember that table? And for each one of these motors, this is M1, this is M2. Oops. This is M1 and M2. So for M1, and by the way, the NH for M1, I'm just going to remind you, that was L, what was it, L and... Uh, this was an L, and this was an M. If you guys take the L and an M to table 430.70B, that's where you find the numbers I'm going to write. So uh, that will be 99.99 times. You're going to times it by the 2 horsepower, 200 horsepower times 100, 1,000 divided by um the voltage what was the voltage 1.73 uh, times the voltage was 208 and if you do the math on this you're going to end up with um five 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 two amps that's the air rush on motor number one let me repeat myself one more time guys the 200 is the horsepower the 1000 from the formula the voltage is 283 phase. The 9.99 is the multiplier for the L letter code. L letter code comes with a multiplier, the highest level of the multiplier, 9.99. Okay, if you do the same thing for motor 2, the same thing. So I start for motor 2. Motor 2, uh, actually 11.19. 11.19 times what's the horsepower of that baby? 150 times a uh, thousand divide everything by again 1.73 times um, 208 and if you guys do the math on that if I did it right you should end up with 4664 amp 4664 amps who cares the question is Ryan would say Chad who cares about this let me tell you where you care a lot about the the lock torture current when you do guys coordination, when we do over current protection coordination, which you guys are going to be doing with Chad in the coming weeks, we have a software. You will be required to grab the M, the letter code of the motor, and put it in the software. So that's all that you do. And the software will assign this multiplier, 11.1, to create the air rush of that motor so we can size the right fuse for the motor. The inrush, guys, is big deal because we need to put a fuse that can fully protect the motor and at the same time allow the motor to start. So how are we going to have a, a, a fuse that can fully protect the motor and allow the motor to start? I have two things. I have I need to allow the allow that fuse, Spencer. In this case, I need my fuse to be able to allow 466, 4,664 amps to be to go through it before it trips. Otherwise, every time you turn that motor on, it's going to open the fuse. And that's a nuisance to it. People will go mad for this one. You need safety, but also you need convenience. You need things to work. 
So that number is very important. It allows you to set the fuse at a certain value that the motor will be fully protected and at the same time no nuisance to it. Sorry, I forgot that little things. That's in a software, as I said, you plug them into the software, the software will assign a curve that you guys are gonna see, and then you set your fuse right at the top of the curve and off you go. And in a couple of weeks we'll go over that one. Any question guys about these? So we had uh, uh, we had the same thing. We have a motor and an AC equipment. And we did the disconnect. We did the conductor, the branch circuits, the feeders, guys, and the overload, the controller for motors. And I hope, I hope, especially the motors, guys, that's not the first time we touched them. So I'm not going to do any other examples other than that tool. And I will do one more on Monday, so review for the test. And then one more for review for the final. When we go review for final, then you guys on your own. Unless you go look at Chad's stuff on YouTube. Where was YouTube when I was single? Holly? <laughs> I don't want to know. Why did I multiply by 200? The 200 is the horsepower. M1 is 200 horsepower. If from, uh, I'm sorry, example number one, remember? Uh, uh, Go all the way to example number one, the one that the motors it was a 200, 200 motor, okay. and that one was 150 horsepower motor. Any question, guys? And you always use the higher number. On. Always the higher number. Done. Go eat. We'll come back and work on the circuiting, my friends. Thank you. Sorry, I have to punish you guys with a. Uh,